All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about how to make a UI that is resizable. Look at that. Fits exactly where you want it to, no matter the size of the display. So let's uh, dive right in. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna to start talking about scoring our game as we play. So what we're gonna do first here is in my, uh, my main game scene here, not any of the levels, but in the main one, the one that I'm inheriting from for all the others, uh, what I wanna do first is I wanna find my top UI. And my idea for this was to have uh, my score in this right here. And then in the center one, we could have either a timer or a move counter. And then in the right one, we could have um, level requirements like uh, a certain number of pieces that you need to collect. So what I want to do is I'm going to select my top UI, I'm going to right click it, and I want to save this branch as its own scene, because I'm going to be doing some stuff to it here uh, on its own. I'm going to save it in my scenes folder, just click save, and then I want to open it up in its own little scene. All right, cool. So for my top UI, um, Okay, and so in this scene here, uh, what I wanna do first is I'm gonna add a child here, and I'm gonna add a margin container. And the margin container is there specifically to make sure that everything is where I want it to be, no matter what the screen resolution is. And I'll show you how that affects it in just a second. So when you open up a control node here, um, the script variables are different. You don't have anything as far as your uh, transform goes, Instead, you have anchors and margins. So I'm going to set the margins here. Uh, actually, let me just use layout. And my layout is going to be full rect. Yep, that should be fine. Um, actually, I'm going to put a little bit of a margin on each of these. I'm going to have my left margin be, say, 20. Um, yeah, that's good. Let's go a little smaller, maybe 16. That's better. 16 gives me so that it's right in this darker blue. Um, my top margin, I'm going to say is 16 as well. That's pretty darn close. Right is 16. Oh, no, negative 16. And then bottom is going to be uh, negative 16 as well, because I want it to be 16 up. Now if I, okay, cool. So I'm gonna save my scene here and I'm gonna add another uh, container as a child of this one. And this is gonna be an HBox container, uh, which is gonna store objects horizontally, just like you'd expect it to. Um, I want this to have, uh, do, do, do for layouts, I want it to be full rect so that it takes up the space it's given. And that'll set all of these margins to zero. And I'm gonna make three children of this. The uh, first one is gonna be a label. Uh, the second one is gonna be another label. So I'll just duplicate that first one. So I highlighted it and hit uh, Command D to duplicate. And I know that these look like they're right on top of each other. We're going to fix that in just a second. And then my third one uh, is going to be a, another uh, container because that's going to need to have um, its own things inside of it. So I'm going to create another HBox container. So I've got label, label, HBox container. Now what I want to do is I want to highlight all of these and I want to go to the uh, grow direction and horizontally, I want them to, actually, it's not grow direction. Which one is it? Size flags. For horizontal, I want them all to expand, which will make it so that I have this label here, here, and then that thing is there. And then I want to do the same thing vertically. All right, cool. So this is kind of outside of the container that we want it to be in. So I'm gonna to go to my HBox container and I'm going to go down here to my custom constants. 
going to turn on separation and I'm going to give it a separation of let's say 16 pixels um, that's not quite good enough let's go 24 so then eh, still not quite right let's go 32 all right that's better all right cool so everything's kind of pretty much where it should be so on my label here uh, I want this to have its own little font so um, I'm going to use a font from the Kenny website. Okay, uh, if you don't already know about it, uh, Kenny.nl is a website created by this guy, Kenny, uh, who's pretty awesome. He's created a ridiculous number of free assets for the community that are Creative Commons Zero. You can use them in whatever you want to. Um, free or commercial, doesn't matter. You can give him attribution. He's always down for that, but you don't have to. So... Uh, what I want to do is I want to look at the UI. So I chose assets here. I went to UI. And I want to look at the Kenny fonts. So I'm going to use one of these fonts. I like the Kenny blocks, but the Kenny pixels is pretty good too. Maybe the Kenny mini or Kenny mini square. Doesn't matter. So go ahead and download this, and uh, let's talk about how you can import it into your project. All right, so... Um, I'm using a Mac, so all of this is going to be with Finder, but if you're using a Windows machine, you can do it with Windows Explorer pretty much the same way. So I have my font package that I have unzipped, and in it I've got the license and then the fonts themselves. Now, I've always had an issue pulling fonts into Godot, unlike with Unity. So in order to make this work, I have my uh, project file open here as well in another Finder window. So in here, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this folder fonts. I'm going to open up the fonts folder, and then they're just going to put all of these in there. There's no reason to only use one or two. I can have all of them to choose. So I'm just going to drag those right in. And then when I go back into Godot, I've got my fonts right here. Now for my label to actually use the font the way I want to, I want to go down to where it says custom fonts under all of the variables here. So custom fonts. And I'm going to create a new dynamic font. And then I'm going to click on here where it says dynamic font. This is going to create a setting for it. I'm going to go to settings. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, font is what I want to do first. For my font data, uh, I'm going to use Kenny Blocks. And for the size, I'm going to set this to 24. And I'll use MIP maps. For my extra spacing, I'm going to leave that alone. Now, if I leave this as it is, it's going to save this as a resource only in this scene. But if I go up here and click this little um, save icon, I can save it as a resource that I can use for all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to click this save as. And I'm going to save it not in levels, but I'm going to save it in the fonts folder. And then this is new dynamic. I'm going to call this uh, instead of new dynamic font.tres, I'm going to call it Kenny Blocks. Tres, and I'll save it there. And cool. Now, if I go back to my label here, I'm going to have my text just be. Zero, zero, zero. So you can see where it is up there. I'm going to set my alignment to be center. And then for my vertical alignment, I'm going to leave it up at the top, but I'm going to change the size of that font now. So I'm going to go down to my custom fonts again. Kenny. And let's make this 32. Now let's go a little bit bigger. A little bit more. Cool. So there's my font for my score. Um, I can repeat this for my label over here, but since I'm using the uh, same kind of label, I can use the same resource. Only this one, I'm going to center align for both vertical and alignment. And then for my custom fonts, because I've already created that font, 
I'm going to load in from fonts kennyblocks.tres. And for my text here, I'm just going to do 0, 0. Yeah, it's not good down there. Let's, uh, let's bring it up a little bit. Um, so instead of doing center, mm, yeah, let's do top and then I'm going to change this font a little bit. Let's go. If I change it now, it's going to change both of them. I'm going to have to be okay with that, I think, for the moment. Yeah, I'm not okay with that. So I'm just going to make a new one for it. Uh, but I can still use this other font for other things. So instead of using this font, this is a very trial and error filled episode. So apologies. All right, so I'm going to make a new dynamic font. I'm going to do all my steps here again, but I'm going to make it bigger. Size 60. Let's actually get a little bit bigger. Too big. 72. All right, cool. Um, all right, so there's my top UI. Now, to show you why I went through all that trouble of using the containers, by using the containers, I can resize, and it dynamically resizes with it. If I didn't have all of these things in containers, then um, they would move around a bit if they weren't all in this margin container. The margin container makes sure that everything stays where it should be, and then the rules for the HBox container keeps it inside there from there on. So there we go. That's setting up our UI. Um, we're going to next time. Let's just make this me just so it's nice to look at. Um, next time we're going to make these actually change based, well actually the score change, and we'll do the moves later. But for next time we'll make the um, score change based on when we make our matches. So thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave any comments in the description down below. Uh, I have a link to the updated Git of this project so you can download that and compare it to your own. Uh, project's open source so feel free to use whatever you want to. Um, all the art is either mine or from open source sources. So, yeah, uh, there's a special message coming up. So please uh, pay attention to that. And everybody have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.